Hey guys, it's Jess with Coastal, and thank you for joining us again today for another nutrition talk with our friends from Neutrina. Uh, you all pretty well know Brian and Ann, um, our reps for most of our stores, <laughs> and Yakima Wenatchee. <laughs> Not that we don't love Yakima Wenatchee, it's just, you know, she y'all, has two. So. Y'all's rep is prettier than ours. Yeah, that's true, that's true. <laughs> Oh, you guys are making me blush. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's just the sun. <laughs> but, um, hey, no, today we're here to talk about show feeds. And as you guys all well know, Coastal is a big supporter of youth in agriculture, youth in FFA, 4-H, showing, you know, any of the livestock from little chickens and rabbits all the way up to horses and cows. And so we have some show feeds here today from Neutrina for, what all do we have? We got pigs and... Pigs, goats lambs, calves. Perfect. And so we're going to little, those are kind of the main ones you see with a lot of uh, like the terminal shows and stuff like that, that 4-H and FFA are involved in as well as a lot of jackpot showing and things across the state. So the big starting thing, what really differentiates show feeds versus just like our normal cob or, a, you know, something like that? So a show feed is specifically designed to carry your animal from purchase to show. So we are going to meet all of your nutritional needs as your animal grows with you. Um, whereas others involve many stages and yeah. things like that. Well, and you know, too, with, when showing, a lot of kids will get those calves, young, pigs, you know, all that kind of stuff, young. And so, you know, in feeding anything, consistency is really where you get your best results. Exactly. You know, if you're switching out all the time... That's not necessarily good. No, exactly. The big thing, obviously, like you said, consistency. Like mm -hmm. from day one all the way through fair, right, is going to be key. Because mm -hmm. the big thing we want to focus on is gaining weight, right? Because yep. these are all market animal feeds, yep. right? Your terminal show. We want to focus on making sure you're gaining that weight from day one at an average rate throughout the time period. Mm -hmm. And the way to do that is to be consistency yep. because it's be consistent because you're going to reduce the stress the more consistent you are. Mm -hmm. So one well, and two stress, you know, you're going if you're going to a lot of jackpot shows, a lot of other things. Those animals are in the trailer a lot, traveling around, and we know that that can be stressful. When you're stressed, like any of us are stressed, yes, you don't gain weight right, you or you gain too much, you, right. too little, you, hold you can on. fluctuate all the time. Things like that. So the more consistent that you can be, mm -hmm. the easier the overall process is on everybody. And yeah. speaking of trailer, like the more that you can practice something also really helps. So if you're in and out of the trailer regularly as part of your training, mm -hmm. anything that you can do to decrease that overall stress of the animal is really going to Mm -hmm. pay off when it comes to fair time. Yep. Absolutely. And starting from like, we'll kind of walk you through some steps, like even starting out when you go to pick out your animal, right? Making sure you're picking out an animal that's going to correctly, it's, as far as it's going to gain weight from the day one you bring it home to fair, you want to make sure you're picking out one that is going to achieve the goal yep. weight you're needing, right? Just because the cute little goats in the yeah. corner, it's the <laughs> little guy, um, sometimes it's not always the best purchase because even if he gains rate a uh, weight at the correct rate, mm -hmm. um, he, he well, might not get there, right? Yeah. So we need to make sure that we're picking the animal um, that is going to be able to achieve to get you to the show pen. Yep. Um, so with that also, you want to talk about make sure you're getting a sound animal. Um, animal selection is huge. Not only are you going to make sure you're in the right uh, weight category, you want to make sure that that animal is sound. And what I mean by sound is they're not limping, they're yep. not gimping around, um, they walk really fluidly and smoothly. There's no obvious um, structural issues because that's just going to, as you add weight mm -hmm. um, and get to fair, that's going to be something that you're not going to want to have. Well, and you don't need to be an expert either an expert judge or anything either when it comes to picking out that animal you know typically if you see a group of animals and if one like stands out to you like something's wrong typically something's wrong right you don't, know even though you may not know one. what it is if just something doesn't look then then skip over that animal right you know? exactly feed exactly. can't fix genetics yeah exactly so, yeah. Like, so there's a lot of that that you just have to a good foundation and all that kind of stuff you just you can't always fix that and yeah Correct. no matter what feed you pour into right. it it's not going to help with that and i'm in regionally this is a thing but i know up here in the northwest there's a lot of breeders that mm -hmm. are like hey these are show sheep or show calves yep. or pigs for this fair right mm -hmm. you're going to have your breeders you're going to go to they're going to know kind of the ballpark you're going to be in just making sure you have that animal that's correct and sound it's going to be there and also like as you can advance, you can also look for like eye appeal and kind yep. of maybe some things that you know the judge is going to maybe pick up or maybe last year the fair 
you know, these type of pigs mm -hmm. or breed of pigs did well because the judge liked that specific mm -hmm. breed. Um, those are all little extras. Um, so we can help you in the nutritional department. Yeah, right. So, but we also wanted to go over just some keys, you know, when you bring your animal home to make sure it's as stress-free as possible, mm -hmm. right? You're, they're gonna be in a comfortable environment. The climate's gonna be good. You're gonna, you know, have a nice shelter for them maybe, or just have a comfortable getting to know them. Um, I know you have some goats here. They're a little skittish of yep. us, right? But after a little bit of bribing, we yeah. became their <laughs> friends a little bit. Um, sometimes that also is key, spending time with your animal. Oh, and sure. patience is huge. Um, they're not gonna be your best friend overnight. Yeah. Sometimes they will, but um, it's definitely important to take the time be able to spend time with your animal, making sure you're exercising them, and the more time and effort you put in, the better the outcome's gonna be. Well, so jumping over to feeding then, mm -hmm. you know one of the key things with feeding then to help tame them down, if you're feeding them, just sitting there with them when they're eating, you know, yep. getting them used to that, and then they'll kinda, it'll loosen them up and you'll become their buddy, so. Right, and as they're just getting there, if they're on a specific feed, make sure that you go through that transition really slowly until you get them on what you want because trying to change everything all at once we'll cause, is yeah. really adding a lot of stress. So like you're changing their water, you're changing their food, you're changing their location, you're changing their friends. If you yep. can take one of those things out and just decrease the stress a little bit mm -hmm. and change things slowly, it'll work out a lot better. So yeah, so leading into this then, if you're, you know, let's say you, you found a good breeder, you have animals that you found the animal you want, you're bringing that animal home, they're already on some sort of feed, especially if they're a rumen animal and stuff, you know, mm -hmm. um, take, do that slow, what's the rule? It's like 20, or how, how do you guys recommend when, when transitioning feeds, you know, so you don't mess that up? It, to, it changes based on the animal, but anything around two weeks time period, I think, is is a good rule of thumb. Of uh, slowly switching yeah. that slowly over, switching slowly it over. going from the one right. and blending and switching to the other, until exactly. you're solely on the other. So that way you don't mess up the good bugs and everything right. in the system. Yeah. So, which feed do you want to start with here? Oh, looks like we're starting with pigs. <laughs> right. Who doesn't love a good pig? <laughs> who, who doesn't love a good pig? Wilbur. <laughs> Wilbur and Babe, I think that's the only two I can come yeah, up with go, yeah. for reference. Um, but so this is our show pig feed. It is a pelleted feed, which is gonna be kind of unusual for a pig feed. Normally mm -hmm. they would be in a mash, um, but we've shown better intake and better results out of a pellet. So ours is a pelleted feed. You can't sort through things. You mm -hmm. can't root and pick out, which pigs would like to do with that snout of theirs right. and get through and be picky. So nice pellet. It is a complete feed. So this is all you need the whole way through. You're not okay. gonna have to pair it with anything. Um, and you would feed this from day one to show. Okay. Now, on the back of the bag, it does break down feeding rates based off of the weight of your pig. So make sure you're weighing often. Mm -hmm. If you're starting to gain too quickly, you lower your feeding lower rates. Uh, and to make sure that you get to that optimal point by the time that it is show time. No, because that's key too, because you know, if you grow them too fast or grow them too slow or different things, you know, you're not gonna meet those certain standards that you want to meet, especially when it comes to carcass contests and things like that. Right. Absolutely. You know, feed them too quick, too fast, they're gonna get blubbery too right. fast and too much fat, you know, you want that. And so, um, you know, looking up things like, you know, proper feeding according to like frame scores and cattle and things like that, you know, finding out when your fare is and things like that, that'll really benefit with this. And to jump in with that too, like I know the extension offices have great oh, resources, yes. right? And I think most of them have like your graph charts, sometimes you have to do for record books. Yep. Anyways, making sure you know your day one, what your weight is, and then all the way, how many days you have to a fair, how many days you have, or how many pounds you have to gain per day, which is known as yep. average daily gain, right. um, to get to that window is huge. And like we saying, weighing is key to be consistent. Um, because if you're, as your animal gets bigger, your feed rate is going to yep. increase. Right. Yep. And the cool thing about pigs too, when they hit about 150 pounds, their ability to convert uh, fat to muscle kind of changes around there. So that's usually oh, about sure. the time too, um, when you can, if you go too mm -hmm. fast, all of a sudden you're usually gonna have to hold off. Um, pigs are usually the easiest ones to kind of do that too. Most people will choose the free feed pigs out of the feeders mm -hmm. at the beginning. Uh, that's a great option. Definitely as you get closer to fair though, we choose to recommend to um, feed them individually because mm -hmm. not only you're knowing what your individual pig is getting, but then also if you're feeding them in a pear uh, pan, you are being able to see how much they're eating and what they're intaking um, instead of just having a free-for-all gotcha. throughout that. Yeah. 
Yep. And not only that, when you get to fair, that's what fair is going to be like. Yeah. It's really, really important to do what you're going to do, what you're at fair. Try to do that at home yep. because you want to make sure that that is going to reduce the stress and get the consistency is key. Right. So, so. if you can uh, simulate that that fair like environment at home it really yeah. helps everything. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. But then we'll jump to the goat feed. So show edge goats. So um, like pig feed, goats do um, have a rumen. So they like to chew. And so with that, they are gonna need hay. But the nice thing about this goat feed is they, excuse me, is a pellet. So we know goats like to be picky, right? They yeah. can eat everything, um, but they'll pick through all the good stuff. So this goat feed being a complete pellet and a dry pellet, they can't pick out any of that nutrition uh, nutritional additives they have, the vitamins and minerals. Um, right. They can't just eat the good sweet stuff and leave the rest. So this being a uh, complete pellet like that, make sure they're getting all the intake they need um, and not picking and sorting through the good stuff. But it also has um, a urinary track, track health of- Ammonium chloride. Ammonium chloride, thank you. Wow. I always butcher that. So I'm gonna make sure Brian has that in. Um, so that does help reduce um, the chance of urinary tract stones. So okay. um, goats tend to get that. So, so they're pretty- predisposed to being yep, goats, weathers, in, goats and goats lambs. lambs. Okay. Yep. So we do have that in there to help maintain that urinary gotcha. tract. Well, that's health. good to know. Let's yeah. learn something new every day. Right? Yeah. And then with the lamb feed, uh, again, it has that ammonium chloride. So mm -hmm. we're taking care of that urinary tract. Um, and this should be fed the whole way up to show. However, your forage, instead of being like however much that they want to get, should really be about two softball size. Um, okay. worth of forage, because uh, you're going to want to watch that belly. So you don't necessarily want free choice with them. You want right. to yeah. control how much forage and how much feed they're getting. Uh, and again, based off of the weight of your lamb as they're growing. And then all of that is broken down really, really well on the back of the bag. That's good. Yeah, absolutely. And then that'll take us to the show, Kathy. And like Brian said, I'm going to flip this bag over. Yeah. Because the back of the bag is super informative. Here we go. And the show calf feed, again, like all of these, you're gonna start slowly, right? And then as your calf or your lamb or pig increase in weight, mm -hmm. you're gonna also increase in feeding rate as well. Um, starting with the um, calf, sometimes your bigger animal, right? Starting at two, three pounds, and then slowly kind of increasing by a pound and a half as your animal grows is key. Um, they are also gonna need that roughage though, right? Yeah. They're gonna need the hay. So making sure you're feeding high, um, high quality hay with them throughout is key, but then, Salt, minerals, but water is what I want to bring up to. Water is, I would have to stress, extremely important because if they're not drinking, they're yeah, not eating. They're not you eating. know this, yeah, right, right? Personally, yep. and if they're not eating, we're not we're not gaining weight, Correct. and which is also reducing the you know chance of making it to fair. Um, the big thing with pigs too, a lot of people will do like the nipple drinkers, right? Mm -hmm. Making sure you're checking to make sure those They're are not, functioning. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. No, they'll get key. plugged or something else, and then you're like, yes. Mm -hmm. And um, so I always make sure make sure I make a habit of hitting that water once, twice a day. Every time you feed, just hit it because if you, all of a sudden you hit it and you don't remember the last time you checked it, right. you're not really you're sure not, how long yep. it's been. Um, so water is extremely important. Clean, fresh water as much as possible is key. But um, but the back of the bags are super informative with how much to feed. You're looking at the two to two and a half percent of their body weight, mm -hmm. um, making sure you're increasing that over time all the way to fair. Very yeah. good. And yeah. With the exception of water, the Show Edge line is designed to give you complete and full nutrition the mm -hmm. whole way through. And it does that in a very, very simple, but really effective way. Yeah, well, like we've said a couple times, consistency is right. key with feeding Absolutely. these out for the long time. And Yep. And you know, at Coastal, we understand as well as with Neutrina, you know, it takes a lot of, well, on the goats and the sheep, maybe not as much input as cows and pigs, but I know cows and pigs that can, you're feeding a lot of these bags, right. you know, and that can get very expensive. And so that's why, you know, we offer the discount programs for 4-H and FFA kids uh, when they're buying these show feeds and stuff, you know, it's a 10% discount on those feeds across the board to help you because we know it can be expensive. And then on top of that, we've talked about in these other videos, the Plaid Perks program. And I think right. you can do that as well on top of the discount yeah, too. Yeah, so these totally work for the Plaid Perks program, which is plaidperks.com. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Absolutely. You log in, make an account, and just keep track of your receipts, and you can get uh, coupons back for feed. Maybe you want some swag, some hats, yep. or I don't know. He's been after there's a I mini know. fridge. A mini fridge. Yeah, I kind of like that mini fridge. <laughs> I want the mini fridge. It's like wrapped in plaid. <laughs> yeah, you know, it looks it's cool. so good. Yes, there's some great uh, points that perks, I guess, on plaidperks.com. Right? But yes, we want to make sure that you guys know the show feed does count towards that, as well as the as coastal. Well as the discount. Um, you yep. guys can go for both of them, and that is you know a way for us to give you guys rewards and help back and coastal as well. Yeah. No. And how cool to be you know you'd be the coolest kid at fair if in your tack room you had a plaid fridge full of mountain dew <laughs> right? to share or with all the kids I'm there's like a know. plaid cooler yeah yes. see there yeah. you go yeah. you know when you're going around all those shows the jackpot shows and stuff yes oh uh, no so yes once again um Great line of show feeds from our friends at Neutrina. And if you have any questions, we have a bunch of other blog articles out there on our website and things about raising show animals, um, OSU Extension, Washington State Extension. Those are great resources, as well as reaching out to your local county agent. You know, um, like we mentioned, there's a lot of good, reputable breeders in those areas as well that you can talk to for these animals that are that are raising and birthing animals at the appropriate time based on your right. fares. So, you know, sometimes it's the big thing to go way out of state to get a fancy animal or something, but those don't always transition as well. Those aren't always timed correctly to growing out for your fare. And so, um, yeah, and if you ever have any questions, feel free to ask us on this video. Just type them below, and uh, Brian and Ann, one of them will respond, or us at Coastal will respond as well and get you taken care of because... You know, we love supporting 4-H and FFA and, and Junior Showman at, at Coastal, and I know you guys do as well. We love Absolutely. it. Love it. So thank you guys yes. again for tuning in. Um, like I said, if you have any questions, again, uh, just comment, and we'll get those um, answered for you. And we hope you guys all have a great show season.